Okay, so just as a reminder, a couple of things that uh, we talked about in last unit. Uh, fundamental counting principle, uh, basically this was our strategy when we had a, a number of choices to make and we multiplied them together. The next one was permutations. Uh, the real thing to remember about it was that order matters. And combinations was when order does not matter in this case. Okay. So let's take a look at how we can use this to sort of work with probability for items that we don't want to uh, exhaust the sample space. For example, if you have a five-digit PIN number, and any digit, it can begin with any digit except zero, um, but there's no other restriction, how many uh, ways could we count it up if it's got to begin with a seven and end with an eight? How many ways could we do that? Any ideas? Because we haven't reviewed this for a while? Because we're tired? That is so close, so close. Did I miss a 9? So you're right about this, because there's only a 7 or an 8 can go there. But then it's 10 for the middle pieces. Right, 10 digits. So that's a uh, a thousand different pin numbers could have a seven or an eight at the end of it. Okay. Um, how many pin numbers in total are there? What did you? Ninety thousand. So if we counted them out, there's going to be everyone except zero. Then there's going to be any digit you like for the remaining ones. So that means there's ninety thousand total. So this would be 1 out of 90 is the probability that you have a pin number starting in 7 or ending in 8. Well, and you do that one, so you put 1, 10, 10, 10, 1. Y yes, because it has to start with a 7 and end with an 8. That's why there are 1s at the beginning and in the end. Divided by the total number of pin numbers is anything except 0, and then any number you like for these. Okay, so let's take a look at cards. Um, for this question, instead of all spades, let's say it's all the same suit. So let's figure out, um, this would be called a flush in uh, poker. So why don't we try the real, uh, a real poker hand? Um, so if you have five cards and they all have to be of the same suit, how many ways is there to do that? Okay, so I'll let you try and think about how to count that up and we'll uh, catch up together. Okay, so let's see how you did in counting these. Um, I'm going to pick the easy one first. So the total number of ways to do this, if we had a uh, 52-card 52 deck, 52 card deck and you pick five cards, that's how many hands there are. So what about uh, the top of this fraction? How many hands can we create that are of the same suit? Okay, so that's a good start. 13 choose 5. If I pick cards from the same suit, there's 13 of them, choose five. But right, there's, there's four suits. So four suits, choose one. Then once you have the suit, there's 13 cards, choose five. So I'll put that in the calculator and figure out what we have. So it's about, uh, well, it's not very optimistic, but you get uh, 1, 9, 8, 1. Okay, so what if this time we wanted to find a hand that had three spades and two hearts? Do you think it's going to be more or less than the probability of having a flush? More. Okay, so from the spades, you're going to choose three. From the hearts, you're going to choose two. I have all five cards. 52 card deck, choose five. Oops. And uh, that gives us a probability of 0.00. .00 Eight. So it's uh, 
quite a bit more uh, likely that this would happen. That's enough there at 8583. So, do you know how, uh, does anybody know is a full house, does a full house beat a flush? It does? How do, how do you think that the uh, people who play poker went to the trouble of uh, ranking their cards? Yeah, that would make the most sense, right? Whichever hand is the least probable gets the highest ranking. So uh, what would be the probability that you get a full house? Less than that? Well, we don't know. There's still some debate whether it beats it or not. So how could I, how could I count a full house? So for those of you that don't know, a full house is not just the TV show from the 80s that had Bob Saget and the Olsen twins. Um, a full house is three of a kind and a pair. So your, your full hand is used with cards, hence the name full house. Okay. So how do I pick three of a kind? Sorry? 4C3. Okay, that's, that's part of it. That's if I have one kind already, right? Because... Yeah, there's 13 kinds. Choose one. Um, but what else now? I've only got three cards in my hand. It's a three of a kind. I still need two more. Um, that is very close. Um, I cannot use this kind again. There is 12. Choose one. 12 suits remain to choose for my pair. So pick one of them. Then there's four. Choose two of that card. And then there's 52, choose 5 for all hands. So let's see here. So I get, um, let's see, this is uh, 0 0.001441. So this one, the full house, is less likely, so a full house will beat a flush in poker. So yes, a full house does beat a, does beat a flush. It's more likely that you end up with a flush, that's why. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this question here. So see if you can calculate how many ways can you get a royal flush in poker? That is ace, king, jack, uh, sorry, ace, king, queen, jack, 10, all of the same suit. Okay, so think about it. See if you can figure out the probability. So um, this one, again, it's one of those topics where common sense is definitely a good aspect to think about before you jump into the math. So how many ways do you think you can make a royal flush? Yeah, there are only four ways to do it. One for each suit. There's only one way to arrange the cards this way um, in each suit. So one way you could think about counting it is four suits, pick one of them, and then there's only one way to create that full house. Once you pick the suit, there's only one group that consists of ace, king, jack, queen, ten. Okay, so there's 52, choose five. Yes, that was it. <laughs> so uh, four divided by 52, choose five. We end up with... 1.539 times 10 to the negative 6. I'll take my shot. Yes, question? Yes, you have, to, you have to pick the correct cards. But if you pick the correct cards, there's still only one way to do it. Okay, so let's say uh, this is similar to the question that we looked at at the start of class. Seven males, ten females are selected to make a committee of five people. What's the probability that at most four are males? So it's a good idea when you, when you hear at most four males. The other option we have is all minus, um, let's see here, five people. The most I could get is five males. So we're comparing that to zero, one, two, three, and four. So this is clearly the easier way to do it, is to count it indirectly. So if I was to count these indirectly, there are, um, let's see, seven males, ten females. So 17, choose five. That's all ways of selecting five people up 17. Remove the time when you have all men. And divide it by your sample space, which is any group of five. 
Okay, so from the calculator I get about, uh, it's almost a certainty, 99.66%.